for betterment in this modern time. In this modern time, education is the key for betterment. Never you waste the time, don't you waste the time. My fellow Belizeans, greetings and best wishes to all of you. In my tenure as minister, I have always emphasized the importance of working together of taking collective responsibility to bring about the improvement in the education sector, to bring about improvement to our country. Our mantra in the Ministry of Education has been that creating better schools, better citizens, and a better Belize is everybody's business. Achieving quality education for all means all of us taking responsibility. It is not the Ministry's responsibility alone. It is not the school's and teacher's responsibility alone. It is also the management's, the parents, and community's responsibility to work at this. My friends, it has long been known that any change for the better in our human condition can only be achieved when together everyone is a part of that change for the better. This initiative is a fulfillment of our manifesto 2008-2012 goal to raise the bar by creating national education performance standards and direct resources to under-resourced, underperforming schools to enable them to meet standards. This Quality Schools initiative is part of a larger quality assurance system being put in place that includes the Inspectorate of Schools. We have long realized that we can't mandate what matters when it comes to the quality of education. Rather, we need to create the environment in which schools, their managements, and their communities take responsibility for the quality of education they deliver and are held accountable for doing so. My fellow citizens, clearly we are doing a lot to effect meaningful change in our education system. There is the need for us to support each other in this venture in order to garner small early successes that helps to dissipate fear. Therefore, there is the need for the pressure, support and continuous negotiation throughout the change process. We remain committed to this approach as we remain committed to the change process. We look forward to your support and engagement. Ten pilot schools are already seeing promising results through their process of becoming a quality child-friendly school. School principals describe the positive impacts that the Quality Child-Friendly School initiative is having on them and their schools. Our biggest problem was to identify what is our problem. While some may say it's the management, some others may say it's the principal, sometimes we might say it's the teachers, and all of us will say it's the parents. So how do we sit down around one table and say, it's not just the parents, it's not just the teachers, it's not just the principal, where we are right now and how do we move from here? That was our biggest problem. It took us like a month to really sort that out, and after sorting that out, then we were able to move on. Students want to come to school. Parents want students to come to school. Too many times we blame the parents and we, we want the parents to get the children here. I said, if we could change the aesthetics of the place, if we could make school welcoming, and if we could make school somewhere students would want to be, then they will come. When they come, then our real work begins. How do we keep them? We have looked seriously at the curriculum and its development and its delivery as well. So we have facilitated and we have had facilitators come in several times for this year and they have been giving us uh, workshops specifically in multi-grade planning. So if you go through the, the plans of the teachers here at the school, you'll find out that they are catering for each, each class in each division. So we are not giving a general teaching, but we are teaching the children to the level that they are to be taught. The response of the changes in the school is, is overwhelming. Parents and stakeholders have been coming in and have been talking about it. The ministry have been coming in and telling us that, yes, we have seen some changes and, and the students on a whole have, have seen the changes in the school and, and they can attest to, to the different things that, that they are being offered. I feel good a, a lot about, about the projects, homework, they are getting graded, exam, study more. Our teachers help us a lot along with assisting by our parents, that's good.
I'm feeling very good. The teachers are letting us know everything that they are doing. And whenever they make a change to the school, they let the students know before they do it. So if the students agree with it, they will do it. We're more involved in the class. If our teacher has a work, she will not talk a lot. She will let us research and teach the class and so about what we have learned. Quality school is helping me very well. My grade is getting higher. It is moving from 60s to 70s and 70s to 80s. The teachers are really communicating with the students and are teaching very well. And this is making me very happy and very glad. We also have the chance to actually have a voice and let the school, the principal, the, the body, the whole representatives know how we feel about certain things. Before this quality child-friendly school came about, you used to see um, many students in the office um, here for negative actions. But now you, um, you, at last you are seeing them here because they have engaged themselves in positive actions and so um, are positive things that they have contributed to. I just admire that change because it it shows us that if we can change a school, then we can change the environment. We didn't have any PSE or whatever because we are a young school, but we were following our grade and looking at how our children perform, and literacy was a big problem. So along with traditional teaching and literacy, those were two big things that we were working with. Now, it's, I can tell you today that so much percent of the children have reached, but we have seen progressive growth in this area. While some schools will focus on motivating students, improving students' attendance, improving teacher competence or more effective curriculum delivery, other schools may have different priorities, such as building leadership capacity, engaging the community, or improving school health and safety. Whatever the school improvement priorities, there are positive outcomes being echoed throughout the school's process of change. To improve the language arts, um, we have decided to, to plan and develop a library, a school library. Well, I would say school slash community library because um, we also wanted the community to benefit from it. We are proud to say that um, we had, um, SIF came around, they saw it, they thought it was a good school initiative. Um, they were impressed to see that we could have come up with a structure that size and to that extent with $7,000, so they have decided to throw in $10,000 for us to fully complete our library. One of the complaints that we had uh, from visitors had to do with um, discipline. This school year, we had a visit of one of our friends who every year would come, but um, he noticed the changes. And um, he was very impressed with the way children were, were behaving, the way they were dealing with their in class that um, he, he vowed and he promised that he would get more people to come and assist our school. So um, it has been working in even those areas. The training that teachers have been able to go and undertake um, has also reflected in the, dis in the disciplinary part of the, of the children. So it's one of the positive things as well uh, of the QSI um, to our school. Key stakeholders of the Quality Child Friendly Schools Initiative are teachers. They have not only embraced the initiative, but have been instrumental in contributing to their school becoming a quality child-friendly school. We felt that we needed to localize our curriculum to cater to the needs of our students. So for this year, we have all been working towards putting in programs that will cater to the needs of our students. We already know that there is a high dropout rate in many of our schools so we have decided to include programs that will have them be more interested in school. I've become a better teacher. The students have also changed. I see them smiling now because sometimes before we had this um, feeding program, the students were, I think, tired because of loss of energy. They don't have the energy and the feeding program, they come in full of energy and we, uh, we are able to play and have fun activities in the classroom. Most significantly, our children are at the heart of the Quality Child Friendly Schools initiative. 
Their involvement has been the most inspiring and encouraging. All our children should be in an environment across this nation which is child friendly. It, um, the whole concept of, of uh, making it comfortable for our children, uh, mean, make it meaningful for our children, whereby we focus on the needs of our children and, um, and to ensure, of course, that they get an education that is very good quality. And by quality education, an education I believe cannot be quality if it's not relevant. So it must be relevant to, to, to their needs, to their community. Um, to what is needed for the development of themselves and for the nation. It is changing the culture of schools in such a way that they take ownership of their own improvement, their own development. We gave a tremendous amount of training in terms of explaining what the whole initiative was all about. So specifically, I think what we are trying to do is to build the capacity of the school to change itself. There is a need to create an educational experience for our children that promotes their harmonious development and prepares them to succeed. To address this need, the Quality Child Friendly Schools Initiative stresses seven key areas of schooling. Uh, key area number one focuses on the school identity and governance. You know, schools trying to figure out who they are. You know, do they have a mission? Do they have a vision? What are they all about, etc. Key area number two focuses on the leadership of the school, which is critical. They are there to mentor, to guide, to motivate, and so we have to continue to build capacity among our leaders. Uh, certainly a leader cannot do this job on his or her own, and so they have to rely on teachers. And, and we came up with an acronym, C-A-R-I-N-G, which focuses on a caring teacher, a teacher who is committed a teacher who is articulate, who is resourceful, one who can use his or her initiative, one who nurtures children, and one who is goal-oriented. And then we have to look at uh, how the curriculum is delivered. Too many of our teachers are still using the traditional chalk and talk. And we're dealing with kids these days who are born into technology. We, we opine that they have a short attention span. It's because the traditional approaches will not work. We have to use uh, differentiated learning styles. We have to use alternative forms of assessment. We have to cater to their multiple intelligences. And so we look at the written curriculum and we look at the hidden curriculum and to see how we can bring those together to help our children. School has always been dubbed home away from home. And certainly we want to ensure that school remains that way, that it is a safe, healthy, and nurturing environment for our children. And we know many times our kids these days come from homes where uh, the environment is not the best. And so school becomes their haven, so much so that it's 435 and they don't want to go home because that's home for them. And so we want to foster an environment where these kids learn together, they feel safe, uh, they are free from all the different ills that they would normally face in the, in the wider society. We know that we, we continue to say in education that education is everybody's business. The schools alone cannot do it. The ministry alone cannot solve all the problems in our school. It has to be a community effort. And I believe too often we don't get the business community involved, the wider community involved to address some of the issues um, that we face in our schools. And so we are looking at how we can get more parental support and participation. We need to be able to ensure that what it is that we're doing, we can do an evaluation and say objectively that yes, we are accomplishing. So the schools can do their own evaluation that's good. Ministry can do it, but we would want that we have external agencies as well. Maybe an inspectorate to come in uh, to do an evaluation, to make a determination how it is that you're progressing. Where were you when you started? Where are you now? There are many key players of the Quality Child Friendly Schools Initiative, ranging from government and school officials to parents and students. While each key player has a particular role to play, it is their strong partnerships that will bring about the changes many of our schools so desperately need. 
the hallmark of the initiative is really to bring the entire school community closer in terms of the ownership of the school. It's not the management that owns the school and the, the principal that owns the school, but it's the entire community that has to take care of the school. Community participation, I think, is fundamental. I think it's one of the weakest areas we currently have in our school system. Parents play a very limited role in schooling. And so I think that is where we should start and, and really try to work hard at. My involvement as a parent, I attend meetings that the school uh, have on its monthly uh, uh, annual basis. Um, I also try to get myself involved with my children to encourage them to do what they need to get done. I notice that the, my, my children, they get more involved with the schoolwork and that is basically because of the different program the school have implemented for the children. I've been a parent for the past 15 years. The improvement that I would like at this school is to teach the children to do gardening more and for the little girls to learn to cook and sew. We want the best for the school and the student. I would like you to extend this program to all the other schools. I think it will make difference so that other children can know that they really have quality school so that they could enjoy some of the environment that we have. When we have parents on board, schooling becomes, uh, well, like, the, the improvement process will just be double, tripled as we get more parents on board. The quality child-friendly schools process, though challenging, pushes us to be better and creates a culture of change in our schools that puts our children first. In fact, it inspires change in all of us, providing us with opportunities for gradually but meaningfully achieving quality in education. education is the key for